And what's really cool is they're just surface mounted. I can put them anywhere. <laughs> October 20th and in theory Jeannie's coming home so that'll be really great you got to see the Gabe in the last video and we are up here on a very nice morning it is a crisp probably 65 degrees out here right now and uh, yeah it is it is quite nice I am liking this fall weather yeah, well, we've got a day of it here in Florida. It'll probably be back into the 90s and in, a, in another day. But while it's here, I'll enjoy it. Anyway, beautiful morning. And, of course, I'm really excited that wifey comes home. Yay! Now, of course, I don't know if she's excited. But she has to deal with me and doesn't get to see her grandchild. Oh, well. Could be worse. I don't know how, but it could be. Anyway, let's see. Uh, one of the cool things, did this last night. So one of the issues that I have been having is how to control the lights. So, you know, we have all these nice lights up in here and the what our plan originally was we were going to use pads we had that capability here Get logged in here i can say gee i want to turn the salon lights on and i hit that button and the salon light comes on and i can hit the off and in theory they go off i just dimmed them there this will also let you make them bright and make them dim and so on there's dim Maybe I'll go do them thick. There, there you can barely see them. And bring them about halfway up and all the way. Lots of cool capabilities with the tablet, but the trouble is, is this application changes and it has to be rebooted and the tablets may be charged. And the maintenance headache of keeping all that stuff working is a pain in the rear. One of the other options we have, and this is through season on switching, is we got these little buttons right here. I push that button and eventually it turns on the, the lights down in the equipment room and engine room. It lights up. I'd prefer it be lit while it's off so it's easier to find, but that's the way it's, it's rigged. I can buy these little switches off of Amazon for 10 to 20 bucks if you buy the C-Zone pre-wired, it's 30 or 40 bucks, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. And of course, then you gotta get a case, you gotta run a wire, and you gotta put a box in it, then you gotta plug it into the C-Zone switch housing. By the time you're done, you spent 50, 60 bucks on a switch, and you gotta figure out where to put them, and the little switch goes back a good inch into the box there. So that's one option. You can get other types of switches that are just mechanical, that are a little flatter and will fit in a narrower spot still got to run a wire for it anyway i'm at home at my computer thinking what would be really cool would be a a switch that integrates into the system via rf battery powered looks nice so those are my three criteria just something that's easy where i'm not having to pull a whole bunch of wires for every switch and all that effort so i do a quick search on google and amazon and yeah there's some switches out there but oh god they are some ugly switches out there i don't know if it's the electronics that make them big which i can't imagine but they're like one of the office supply stores here in the u.s had a thing called the easy button which was this big old round red button and it said easy across it and you slept it well that's what some of these switches look like oh yeah i'm gonna mount that on my wall i don't think so i'm sitting at my desk and i've been doing that searching at some point i look down at my desk and we have the lutron caseta lighting system they also have ra2 and ra3 or radio 3 or some of the other more commercial or upscale brands but the one i'm used to is the Lutron Casada. Probably got a dozen or two dozen of those switches in our house. Been real happy with them. They work really well. They look nice. And one of the features those switches have is they have a little remote. 
And this is what the little remote looks like. And I'm looking at that going, that would be perfect. It has a great design language. It's the Coro, which matches our, our outlet plates. And what's really cool about these is you have this remote, but they have an entire infrastructure where you have a little back plate, which just actually can go in a box or you can attach this directly to the wall and then you have a cover plate so you have all these different pieces you have the little switch which goes into this guy which then can be put onto a cover plate which then allows you to do a screwless wall plate and they actually make these i think all the way up into four so you can do a row of four switches i'm like wow that would be really cool but the catch on these things is they're designed for AC systems. You pair this with a switch that's over in the wall and then you can make this a three-way switch or whatever. And there are some capabilities you can get. They have their little hub and you can have scenes and stuff where you push the button on this and it causes a scene which turns on two or three lights. All cool, I don't have AC lights. All these lights are LED digital 12 volt lights and then some like our accent line here are RGB and the newer ones we're putting down below are gonna be both RGB and white LEDs like these. But I use a home automation program at home called Home Assist. It works really well, been super stable. We actually installed it on the boat here to control these lights. When I'm using the tablet here, that's running the Home Assist Android application, which is talking to the little Home Assist computer let me go up here. This is the little Home Assist computer sitting inside of there. And of course the tablet talks to it. This part of the app, super stable. It's been on for nine months. I finally rebooted it last night when I installed the Lutron device. So here's the Lutron bridge. Now this is a special one. They have two, they're both commercial, but if you just go to Home Depot and buy this, you're gonna get the non-pro version. This is the pro version. What the pro version does is it makes available to you the Pico remotes inside Home Assistant so that when you have this remote, you can actually see the remote in Home Assistant. With the non-pro version of the hub, you can't see, at least my understanding is you can't get the actual remote statuses. These will still control electric lights through the Lutron system, but not through the Home Assist system. I may be wrong, don't quote me on that. But what was really cool, so last night, I got up here with one of these. That's the pro version, got it installed. That went really quick. Then dealing with Home Assist because you got to write a little bit of programming. Once that was done, I can now push it on. The lights come on, push it off, the lights go off. I have not put dimming capability in or use the favorite button so you can set it up to do scenes or whatever. But then I have it on a slow fade going out. I could make it instant. I'm really happy because now what we can do is we can take this kit, come over here where we were gonna have a wall panel. We may still do a wall panel there, don't know. We can now put buttons pretty much wherever. I haven't checked range, so that's gonna be the other big thing. It's like if I go all the way down in the engine room and I put a button down there and I push the button, is it gonna make it up through the steel and everything? I don't know. It doesn't use Wi-Fi, it uses something called Clear Connect, which I don't know if that's a Lutron standard or if it's an industry standard but obviously you have to have the infrastructure in place to use this. Our lights don't go through NEMA or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about trying to get through NEMA, but we use DMX LED drivers for our lights. The reason I used DMX was it's a fairly simple standard you basically send RS-232 commands. So I had some of my own software that did RS-232 commands, sent it to the DMX controller, then you could control the lights. And my initial plan was I was gonna write my own software and do all that, but I got so many things I still need to do on this boat that obviously that was not happening. Let's see if I can bring that software up. Bringing up my custom light controller, which is a little Java application. You have to go there, and then you have to configure the serial port to that rate, yeah, change successfully, and then, Looks like you go out, and then you go change directory again to that one, and then finally you can start slide. So, see this will start? So this is the little thing. You do, I think you do start slider, and then this guy starts running, so it's just giving you information, and then you can do show pilot house light controller, and lo and behold, and I'm sitting here at the desk, and I can click, no, I'm not at the desk, I'm at the nav station, I think. Click on, and nothing happens. So much for it working. Now, I haven't tried using any of this. Oh, the bathroom came on. Oh, maybe that app station did come on. I just didn't notice it. It's over there. So yeah, so you can turn, you click that guy. Click, click. And this is all just DMX and you can do dimming and whatnot. So there I am dimming. And there's the light going up and down. The other feature this has is, well, let's turn it off, is you can, 
turn on red lights because there's a red light in there so anyway so that works the red works and this also controls rgb this is pure dmx okay so here is our current lighting system so this program that little bit of software right there is running on this raspberry pi right here and then coming out of this port here we go into either three volts or five volt whatever the signal level on the raspberry pi is out to rs232 which then goes into the dmx and so it's flashing and basically the little blinking light here means we have good dmx signal and then these are two dmx controllers they take the dmx information and convert it to voltages on all of these light pieces here on each light we have a fuse for the primary power so that if something was to happen at the light it wouldn't take out one of the control boxes and it wouldn't damage the wiring it would blow the little fuse in here anyway that's how that system works this was what our original plan was i wrote this software as a proof of concept of course then i got to do all these little GUIs. And it's just java but not a big deal and that was our first plan the trouble is i got to write all these GUIs, and then there are only four lcd screens and there's no other connectivity or no other control of the lights so some limitations at some point i'm doing some research and came across this thing called home assistant and it's like well that's really cool they don't do dmx but they do artnet and so you can get a artnet to dmx converter and all artnet really is is dmx over ethernet again sorry if i'm mangling what these standards are the dmx is a theater light standard i believe for rgb and everything got an artnet converter that came in here and where there had been a raspberry pi i put this artnet node and basically you come in with ethernet and what i did here is used a poe power over ethernet to send my ethernet signal into this guy and to give me power so i don't have to run extra power to this and then out the back side comes the dmx going to that and what's really cool is now the home assistant can do the work of setting up the screens and stuff like that and of course it gave me tablet capability it gives you remote capability you can be anywhere in the world with your phone and bring up your external site and now you can control your lights why you want to control them in your world i don't know you can see the dmx signal i think they actually send it faster than i do because it's blinking a little quicker there and then the solution that i discovered was the lutron already worked with the home assistant and it was just tying the pico in with the pro bridge so that i could control my lights like that which that is infinitely easier than bringing up a computer as you just saw a moment ago and writing all the software for that or even having the tablet because what's irritating about the tablet is it times out this time it was up but a lot of times you'll come up and it'll be back at the home screen and you'll have to restart the application and it says oh there's a new version and it wants to load the new version and just i know there's programming it's just this was a hassle so anyway that is our lighting system and so you're going to see us start to install some of these and i need to convert the pilot house over to artnet and get it programmed the only trouble is getting the artnet into home assistant is, is not simple you have to go into the configuration file and add probably a dozen lines of code for every light you're going to have so if you don't like coding or don't like config files and things like that this is not for you but for me it's going to be a game changer in being able to put some really nice tactile attractive switches pretty much wherever i want to and what's really cool is they're just surface mounted i can put them anywhere i'm really excited about it because there's a lot of places where there just isn't any room behind the wall anyway that's what i played around with last night i didn't film any of it I mean, you don't need to see me grousing at software developers and doing stupid things with how their program is and what you have to go through to get stuff to work with software i know i'm, I'm being ironic because i've been a software developer for for 40 years and i'm sure there are lots of people that have said mean things about me from my software being inflicted upon the world anyway that's it for my diatribe here on our lighting system if you found it interesting great subscribe there'll be more discussions about it as we flush it out and we're still going to have some panels here and there and we have lights that are controlled over on the nema side of the world i want to bridge that i already have custom software that will bridge the gateways and stuff like that that allow you to do things with the nema side i just gotta introduce a home assistant and and nema and put those two together which is not a a minor undertaking it's just one more thing on my long list of stuff our first goal is to be able to control the hotel side of the boat i just learned that term dealing with super yachts and whatnot you have the 
the, the boat side of the boat and then where people live is called the hoteling side. That's so really with charters and things like that, which at the moment oh, we're not doing. So that's about it. Again, if you enjoyed this content, click the like button, subscribe. And if you really want to know when we put new videos out, which usually is every Tuesday and Friday, click the notification. A lot of it's going to be us doing construction, but hopefully we're going to be getting to sea trials here in the near future as more and more of the boat gets finished out and we're not building things endlessly. Yeah, then we'll just be repairing things endlessly or trying to get it to work endlessly. Actually, everything we've installed pretty much works the way we expected it to. I don't know if that's just because the capability of equipment has gotten better in the boating world, so it's more reliable, or I'm doing all the installation. I'm doing just a really bang up job with the installation. <laughs> it's probably my wife. She's the one that makes sure she's not tolerant at all about technologies and stuff I bring into the house that doesn't work. If it's not on par, it usually gets ripped out pretty quick or redone or put in my office and ignored by her. Or I get just lots of, Bell, fix the lights, fix this. So the wife acceptance factor, WAF is very, very important in our house. <laughs> anyway, later. <laughs>